Hi guys, uh, today I want to talk about thieving and how can you implement it in Altium Designer. Thieving is a typical process which is done by the PCB manufacturer as a pre-processing step, but uh, <clears throat> uh, some manufacturers can charge you extra for that step. So if you want to do it, uh, you can do it yourself in Altium. I know there is uh, a video uh, from Altium from for version 10, I think, which shows how to, how to do thieving, but um, unfortunately uh, the uh, tutorial or the video doesn't work for Altium uh, 20 or 21, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, first of all, make sure that you have a pretty large grid. I have it set to 1 millimeter. <clears throat> uh, have a single layer selected. So we're gonna work on top layer. Uh, first of all we're gonna start by creating a feeding net. Uh, we do it by going to design, netlist, edit nets. And we're gonna add a new net. Then we press OK. The net is created in a netlist manager. Uh, the reason I'm creating the net is because I want to use via stitching for creating a, a set of vias, stitching vias across the PCB and then convert them to uh, another type of shape, like a normal pad. So now that, now that we have our um, net created, uh, we can do copper pour. So for that we go to tools. Polygon Pours, Polygon Manager, and we create a new polygon from Board Outline. So we just click New Polygon From, Board Outline. In Properties we select our newly created net, and we place Apply. Um, so here's our polygon connected to the feeding net. Um, now it's a good idea to have a little bit more spacing between the, between the traces and the copper layer. Um, this is actually a, a bit optional, but uh, typically it's a good idea to have some spacing uh, in order to reduce coupling from, say, a high-speed net to the, to the to the copper fill next to it. So we do this by clicking a clearance rule. And we set it to 2.5 millimeters. Hit OK. And then we have to force the repour. OK. Now we got the spacing that we want between the copper fill and uh, our traces. Next thing we need to do is to actually move this polygon to the side uh, because uh, the design has traces on the bottom. So if we do the stitching right now, then we uh, are not going to have the all the areas filled. So we can do that as follows. We start by using a helper layer. Um, helper layer is just a mechanical layer that I made. Uh, you can do the same by clicking all, uh, by hitting L key and then uh, on the, under mechanical layers add the mechanical layer. And I'm going to add a semi crosshair like so. I'm going to select it and uh, move it to the side. So my board is 160 millimeters and I want to place it somewhere here so I'm going to add 20 millimeters to it. So I'm going to hit the M key and then move the selection by 180. Okay. So this is our reference point for the polygon, which we're going to move. 
we select our polygon ensure that is the feeding net that's correct so now we can do control C and then we can do either control V or we can do edit pay special and uh, select keep net name paste and now we're gonna paste our polygon okay this polygon can now be deleted we select this one just remove the reset error markers okay now we're almost ready to do the stitching but first we have to add a backside to this polygon uh, so we have something something to stitch against for that we're going to utilize the bottom layer and we're going to add a fill. So place P, press P, uh, and select fill. Also make sure it's bottom layer. And we start from our marker and just drag it out. Okay. Now, this fill is not connected to anything, so we have to assign it to the same net. Otherwise, the stitching will not work, so we'll assign it to the thieving net. Okay. Now, okay, we have everything we need. Now we can go to Tools and select Via Stitching and Shielding. And we're going to add stitching to net. Here we select the net, our thieving net. We we'll assign the size, doesn't actually matter because you can change it afterwards, but here I selected a um, via with 1.2 millimeters in diameter and zero in hole size and a grid of 1.4. So we just hit OK and let it do the job. Okay. Got the massive amount of vias created. So now we can safely delete our fields and polygons and we can do some work on our stitching DS. We have to select them all for that I'll either drag a rectangular shape around them or you can click and find similar project objects and select objects which are connected to the same net and have same same dimensions. Okay, we got our stitching layers selected. Now what we can do now is that we can convert them to free paths. Uh, we do this by going to tools and selecting convert selected bias to free paths. And we just let it do its job. Okay. Now, with all the files selected, we can move them to the proper layer, which is the top layer. Come on. Okay. And now we can remove them from the feeding net because it's not necessary anymore. Still selected, we move them back to our original design. Oh. Move, move selection by XY, and we go the other way. Okay. Now you can actually hit Control Q and then store the selection in the selection memory so you have access to it at a later stage. Now we can delete our helper crosshair and if you don't like the shape you can always change it by reselecting recall and change the shape to, for instance, rectangular. Um, there's one problem. 
with this is that if we look at the 3D version, we see that uh, the pads are exposed. So in order to correct that, we go to Recall, and then we modify our past paste mask expansion and solder mask expansion manually. Set them to large negative value. Okay, now we can check. Not visible. And we can modify a single one. Okay, so this is how you do a feeding. You can do it on the. Uh, you you can repeat the same process on the bottom layer. The procedure is the same. Do the copper fill on the back side. Uh, add the copper polygon to the same rule clear clearance rule. Move it to the side, create a fill, and then do stitching. Okay, so hope you learned something new today. Thanks.